Good afternoon, this is Brian Shannon from Alpha Trends Blogspot. It's Tuesday, the 16th of October, 2007, and uh, the market's closed. Let's take a look at the S&P 500. You can see that this market was down $1.19 today. Uh, that's a loss of about 0.77% uh, according to my screen. And uh, we did close right below that rising 20-day moving average, although the, the benefit of the doubt still goes to the buyers while we have all these moving averages still rising. It is, like I've been saying, time to be cautious in here because the short-term trend is showing us lower highs and lower lows, and we've got that declining five-day moving average. So we've got mixed uh, messages from the markets based on various time frames. And when that happens, it means go slow, maybe keep your share size smaller or... Uh, move more from a uh, maybe swing trading environment to a, a more day trading, more aggressive, if, if you want to look at it that way. It's more it's time to be more aggressive and focus on shorter term time frames. Uh, but the short term trend is lower and it didn't show any signs of reversing that yet. We can look at the, uh, let's take a look at the 30 minute time frame. We've been looking at this uh, trend line that was broken. And again, these lower highs and lower lows. Looks like the best potential level of support is at about 153 and a quarter or so. Uh, we could throw some Fibonacci levels on here from this recent uh, low, uh, September 25th, to the high that we saw on the 11th. And you can see that that kind of lines up right in there at 153. So 153, 153 and a quarter looks like the most reasonable place to expect to see uh, the buyers come in. Now, that doesn't mean it will become support. Bro resistance, once broken, doesn't become support. It's not a rule. It's a general observation. And it means that we want to look for evidence of buyers in that area. It doesn't mean put your money at risk and just guess where the low is going to be. That's not... The, the right way for, uh, for for trading. What you want to do is wait till you see evidence of buyers, and then as the market slowly transitions, like we saw, you know, even just uh, over in here, as the market was transitioning, we saw that five-day moving average flattening out. You had a day and a half, two days, to purchase all the stock you wanted before this rally resumed itself. So it's, it's not an all-at-once shift of uh, momentum, not typically. Sometimes when we have a really sharp sell-off, we see that, but uh, the the market usually makes a slower shift uh, on these shorter term time frames from a uh, position of sellers being in control of the short term trend to the buyers being in control. So um, basically, my uh, stance is kind of the same that we've got mixed signals. So either go slow and be on the sidelines with cash, or become more aggressive with uh, shorter term day trading positions. Uh, and you've got to figure out which one's right for you. If there's there's no one uh, one size fits all for that. It depends on how you interact with the market. Um, let's take a look now at the semiconductors. What happened here, and a couple people pointed that out, thanks for the emails, was that uh, Maxim, MXIM, uh, got delisted uh, from the semiconductors. It basically got kicked out. So the uh, so what, what in effect happened was the semiconductors traded ex-dividend, and it's my understanding that the people who bought the semiconductor holders will be getting a cash distribu distribution. Now, hopefully, what they'll do is fix this chart because basically you got to take these three candles and put them back up in here or somehow adjust it because uh, otherwise it just screws up all the moving averages. It's, it really makes a big mess of this whole picture here and makes it harder to analyze. So let's take a look instead at the semiconductor index. You can't trade this one. Um, it's In other words, it's not an ETF, but we can get a more accurate picture of what the semiconductors are doing overall. So in here, we've got uh, bigger resistance up near 510. We've got that 50-day uh, moving average at about 495, and we've got a declining 10, 20, and 50-day moving average. So it tells us, basically, the semiconductors aren't looking too good in here. Um, so it's it's better probably suited for uh, uh, short side trades. Although uh, after the close today, we do have Intel reporting earnings, and a lot of times they can have a big influence on uh, the overall index. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, but for now, it looks like uh, if you know if you're trading these, um, you know just be careful because of. Intel and because we are in a downtrend overall in the semiconductors. The IWM, Russell 2000, uh, you can see that that also failed to hold at the rising 20-day moving average. Moving averages aren't support levels until after the fact like anything else. They're just a, a reference point, something to compare price to. 
what typically happens, as I've been explaining, is we'll typically see support near the shorter term moving averages early in the uptrend. And then as the trend progresses a little bit further, the pullbacks get deeper. And that's where you start to see that uh, the profit taking starts to halt. New buyers come into the market to, to provide bids. And that's why it tends to find support near there. Again, it tends to be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Key word there is, however, tends to. It doesn't mean it automatically will. Don't look at those as the place to put your bid or uh, you know a reason to make a purchase in that area. So we've got a uh, you know we've seen a couple of these trend lines kind of break, and now we're looking at this one on the 30-minute time frame. You can see that the 82 level was supposed to be the support area, uh, the important support area that we've been looking at. Right now it. Uh, it's it's right on it so a lot of times we get a move slightly below a widely watched level before the market reverses I'm not making that call just want to make you be aware of that potential scenario however the odds don't favor continued upside if we get a gap open let's say in the morning uh, because we have a declining five-day moving average if we've put Fibonacci on here you can see that uh, a two-thirds retracement would bring us down to the, about that uh, 8145 level 8140 and that's about where we had this prior level of resistance so again just uh, wait for the shorter term time frames to confirm what uh, what you might be expecting to happen rather than just going in and blindly putting your money at what you perceive to be a, uh, a level of support support or resistance is only known after the fact if the market uh, you know, find support here in rallies, then we can look back and say that was the level of support. Right now, this old resistance is a potential level of support because price has memory, because participants have memory, and they act and react based on their P&L a lot of times. They might add to a position. Shorts might start covering in there. But the bottom line is, uh, right now, we continue to have mixed signals, and that's why you want to just be more cautious or, again, more aggressive and, and switch to more of a day trading mode. The NASDAQ 100 has been the area where we've seen the most relative strength. Uh, it's been outperforming. It was down a quarter today or about a half a percent. So even on a percentage basis, once again, we saw less damage done in here. The market is, again, it's clearly extended in here. Um, you could draw a trend line off of this reactionary low and say that it looks like it's holding that. I think a more valid support level or trend line would actually bring us down to here. So, um, again, still clearly extended to the upside. Um, it looks as though maybe the market's getting a little bit tired. I said that yesterday. We do have these lower highs. That's not a good sign. We do have a declining five-day moving average. That also is not a good sign and tells us to be cautious in here. I think breaking below uh, 52.70 uh, or so could lead to at least a test of this low right in here. And if we throw Fibonacci on this, we can see that... Uh, that would give us, um, well, actually, that's the two-thirds retracement that I pointed out the other day where it did, in fact, find support. This longer-term uh, uptrend that, that we can take a look at, the, the, which is still intact, um, if we start to see retracements off of this level from the September 19th low to the highs of October 11th, well, that's a one-third retracement uh, of this bigger move. And uh, it's about $52 a share would be about a 50% and 51 and a half. So bottom line is we still have mixed signals from the market. Um, er, it's earnings season. Surprises happen. And uh, people who, who were involved in Ericsson today saw that, uh, you know, what a lot of people think is a big blue chip company, uh, you know, at least in Switzerland or wherever this stock's primary exchange is, you know, can have a very bad effect. Even when we have a rising 10, 20, and 50-day moving average. We had an uptrend, but it got decimated today. And uh, there are a lot of risks trading uh, in front of earnings reports. So be sure you know where, uh, where actually when the earnings are due for the companies that you're trading.